Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hunters of all ages and monsters of all stages, I'm DB Sinclair here with Jay Party. And as you may not know, Evolve can be played completely offline by yourself, and that's what we're going to show you today. The following two matches are being played by a single person, the one and only legend, myth, and master, Scott James. Offline here, playing at the 2K offices, and we're going to show you what this experience looks like from both the monsters and the hunters' perspective. We are jumping in to defend. Defend is a mode that is part of the larger evacuation campaign. The entire evacuation campaign can be played entirely offline. That's what you're seeing today. Scott James is playing defend as the monster completely by himself against the AI, playing offline, and he's chosen to play the newest monster, Wraith. As DB just mentioned, we are offline, but what's important about this is that you're able to keep any of the achievements you earn while playing offline and bring those to the online competition. This means monster unlocks and ability unlocks will carry over in all the different modes of Evolve. Yeah, the awesome part about this is if you're playing and getting ready for that competitive play against real people, you might want to come in here and mix it up against the monsters or the AI hunters, as you see Scott doing here. Uh, or maybe you just want to come in and practice the newest monster that you've unlocked. As Jay Party mentioned, everything you do in here counts towards your progression in the competitive game. Yeah, and what's cool about this mode is it allows you to experiment without consequences. Playing against those AI bots is just good training to get those ability combos down. As we're going to see today with this Wraith character, there's a lot of fun combinations you can do with these abilities to kind of chain them into some unique strategies and hopefully surprise the hunters. And you really need to do that here with Defend. Defend is a mode where you really need to be patient. You need to let your minions who are pushing those lanes do work against the towers as you yourself come in and try and dismantle the hunters when they're focused on the minions or keeping the towers up. As you can see, the Wraith, though, down on armor, might need to pop out here, is able to do that, could possibly send that decoy in to do damage while he's out trying to get armor. Yeah, perhaps the biggest unique mechanic of defend is that the hunters are going to constantly respawn. There's no way to win this mode just from knocking out the hunters. You will need to destroy the objectives. So that makes prolonged combat not optimal for the monster, as he's going to want to get out once that armor is gone and do the damage he can when he has AI backup. And those are those other little tiny goliaths running around trying to tear down the generator. That said, if you could take the hunters out, they do have to wait for their dropship. You can use that time to take down the tower in your way or any of the turrets. You've seen the monster focusing too. Two of the hunters got him backed in the corner and is able to potentially get one of them down there. I don't see the hunter uh, as dead yet, so nicely done with the cloak there from support. And that supernova move just dishing out the damage. One of the Wraith's strongest abilities in her kit is that supernova, and she's going to really rely on that to take down these hunters as she's able to isolate Daisy here and remove that extra factor from the team and get rid of those random revives. Also, when you take down the hunters or Daisy, of course, and you kill them to their death, you will be able to munch on their corpses, and that will give you some armor to go back into the fight. In Defend, you want to be really patient. You want to pick your battles. You want to go in when you have armor, as there is a lot of firepower coming back at you. Yeah, worth noting, although the hunters are going to constantly respawn, the monster, however, has a very limited health pool. Because you start at level 3, there is no way to gain health in this mode, and that makes that armor management just so important. You need to bail when your armor's down and get in there when it's up. Specifically, look for the support of those AI monsters, as you can see just on the edge of the Wraith screen there. It looks like they're moving towards the second objective here, as that first generator is down. Yeah, generator 2 already being worked on by the minions, the Wraith using that decoy, sending it towards the generator generator as well while the wraith itself uh, is going to pop that supernova and be able to take down one of the turrets as you can see uh, what Scott is doing is he's using that armor to go in and take down the turrets then backing out letting the minions do their job and uh, hopefully getting some more armor so he can go back in. Yeah, I like this decision here, taking down those turrets early. It's going to give the space the AI needs to hopefully get the small goliaths in there to tear down the objective. Your goal really as the Wraith is just to distract the hunters, keep them on their back foot, and don't allow them to focus the fire on those small little goliaths. You're seeing the minion timer up in the left-hand corner as well as the countdown timer for the mode. That is basically when the evacuation ship will leave. Right now you're seeing hunters will win in 5 minutes and 46 seconds uh, if the monster is not able to destroy the final objective. Popping the supernova there is the Wraith. The Wraith going in on Bucket. 
uh, trying to do some damage on the hunter, unleashes the decoy there, and the hunter goes down. Yeah, and you may be noticing the decoy actually is going to gain the current state of the Wraith, and that includes the Supernova ability. So you want to use that Supernova ability first, and then unleash that decoy, and it's going to do a tremendous amount of damage as he goes for that abduct there, but misses the hunters. Yeah, the Wraith misses the abduction, but goes in for the Supernova. Is going to try and do some damage and push the hunters off of the generator, because we know that the minions were back there doing work. The monster knows that as well. Uh, pushing the hunters back off of the generator allowed that final minion to destroy generator number two and now they're going to be working on the final objective here, J-Party. If the monster destroys this final objective, the monster will win, and unfortunately, a lot of colonists will perish. That's going to weigh <laughs> heavily on this hunter squad. Absolutely, DB. And as noted, too, when each generator falls, it's going to increase the round wind timer for the monster. This is going to give the monster a lot of room to farm this area. He's got, he's got over eight minutes now to destroy this last objective. And for those of you at home, if you're worried about the hunter squad feeling bad about uh, the loss of lives that they might incur if the Wraith wins, Remember, these are AI hunters. That's right. They don't have feelings, but they're really good at playing the game. The Wraith there, trying to get out, nicely done to go in, use that decoy to do damage on the turrets, potentially taking the turrets down, and then back out when she sees that uh, she's low on health. She's going to pick up some armor and take the fight back to the hunters. Yeah, doing a good job here. Got rid of one of the hunters here, but trying to focus down the trapper can be dangerous. If the rest of the squad realizes what's happening, they're going to be able to really focus fire the Wraith and get some real good damage in with no armor. So nicely done uh, by the play of Scott James there. So what he did was he went in with the Wraith, uh, used the decoy to take down that first turret, uh, and then as soon as the hunters came in to try and get the minions off of the final objective, he went back, he took care of the hunters, uh, and then went back in and took the turret out, the second turret that was taking out um, his uh, minion friend, allowing the minion to do as much damage as possible while on that final objective. You're seeing though the monster at very low health. I'm surprised he goes back in here just trying to mess up those hunters as much as possible and maybe have less hunters to deal with while pushing that final objective. And that's such a good thing to practice here in the offline mode too. Test your limits, see how far you can really push it. You'd be surprised how much a monster can get done with very little health here. The hunters are just so about the momentum, relying on keeping them on their back foot is such a strength here. The Wraith knows that one of the hunters is down and the, although the respawn timer is short in this mode, it is still existent and that's gonna give him the space he needs to hopefully destabilize the rest of the team and get an easy win with those AI monsters just tearing down the final objective. Just under seven minutes is plenty of time to come back here, feed, gain that armor up as you see the monster are doing and like Jay Party mentioned uh, this is the offline mode and this is a great time to practice the way that monsters are unlocked in the game is you're playing the other monsters first before you get to Wraith here uh, so you're not going to be as familiar with Wraith as you are with uh, Goliath potentially especially for that competitive game you want to come in here and like Jay Party said push your limits push your abilities see what is possible uh, and you don't have to worry about um, you know the people on the other side giving you a hard time about it yeah, absolutely. And some of the cool strategies you see the Wraith using, using that decoy to send out, get the hunters distracted, and then go for the sneak bounce on some unsuspecting prey there. And look at that nice. attack. So perfect. Such a strong combo. Unfortunately, the AI is quick to respond and is going to shoot him right off their ally. He does shoot him off, but he gets that uh, <laughs> poke there with his little blade uh, into the face of Hyde. Hyde goes down. He's going to eat Hyde. He's going to gain armor right from the, uh, the hunter there. That's another reason why in this mode you might want to take down a couple hunters while you're fighting near the objective you won't have to go so far back into the forest or jungle area uh, to get your farm on and get your armor up yeah with health this low every bite matters he needs as much armor as he can possibly sustain and the wildlife population has been quite diminished so far as he's been feeding vigorously around this final objective so they're out of a uh, assault so no damage here or at least uh diminished damage and out the medic so the heals aren't going to come as fast as they want actually it looks like assault is finally back in as you mentioned before j party there is a uh shorter uh, dropship time than in the normal modes like hunt or nest or rescue. Yeah, and this, this objective getting real close, but the Wraith just as close. One mistake here, you could take a large hit to the face and end this round, but the AI still doing work on that final objective, and this could be a win for the Wraith. 
or the hunters here. Any way to go. Yeah, hard to tell. Nice abduction there, though, on Maggie the Trapper. Looks like he might be able to get Maggie down so low on health, though. I'm terrified for the Wraith right now. Uh, she needs to get out of there. Scott James is a smart monster player, though. He knows when uh, he's reached his limits. Not so much when he plays the hunter, though, Jay Parties. We've seen him <laughs> been picked off. But uh, as the monster player, nicely done. Uses that decoy to not be focused. Such a low sliver of health. Let's see what he can do here. As the minions working on the objective, doing a lot of work for him. Uh, nicely done to keep the minions going by taking out the hunters and Daisy. And with health this low, it needs to be really aware of how many dashes he has. You see in the center of your screen, the indicator right over the crosshairs is those small little orange bars. That is his dash counter. He's only got three of those. It's a very limited ability, and then it must recharge after that. He's going to rely so heavily on this as he ducks around this combat and tries to get the final hits on the power relay. He does on one of the hunters. Hunt, one of the hunters goes down. I think that was Bucket. Uh, two of the minions are still up. One of the minions is very low on health, but he already took out the turrets, so no turrets doing damage there. The minions continue to do work on the final objective as he's just keeping the hunters busy at this point. Yeah, trying to focus the medic there and also relying on taking out the support class wants to get rid of the utility on the team, and that's going to allow him to clean up the rest of the hunters with no real trouble, and as this power relay is still clinging to life. Yeah, doing a great job there. Finally, he does that uh, supernova, goes in on the medic, gets the medic down. The hunters right now struggling to try and get him uh, down and out, but just hanging on for dear life with the rest of this little sliver of health. He's just going to go in on the back of the power relay now while the hunters are uh, on the other side dealing with that final minion. Uh, and going into Supernova again, that should be able to do the damage that he needs to win. And sure enough, it is, Jay Party. Ladies and gentlemen, that is solo evacuation defend mode there. Uh, shown by the master of the monsters, as I like to call him, Scott James. Well done there. And now we're going to see the opposite, Jay Party. I'm pretty excited for that. We're going to switch over. Uh, to a match of defend from the hunter's perspective and the beauty of this um, is when he was playing the monster he is stuck with that monster playing against the AI there but now he's actually going to be able to hot swap between these hunters and play whoever he wants. Yeah, and this is one of the coolest modes to say and to play, and actually one of the most impressive modes to watch. You just see a really good player is going to bounce between all four classes, use those long cooldown and key abilities to keep each other alive while they focus on the main character that they'd like to control, which in a lot of cases, uh, you know, it becomes very situational and you can't have a standard. Yeah, very situational, even from the beginning here. As you see, he starts with Markov, he lays the mines down. Then he switches to Maggie and he puts down the harpoon traps. And then finally here on Bucket, and he's putting those sentry guns down. He knows exactly how to lock down this area, or at least how he wants to, and he's doing that really well. Oh, nice move to put a little sentry gun on top of the rocks there. It's going to be hard for the monster to focus. Uh, and now it's up to him who he wants to switch between as it becomes even more situational based on how this fight goes. Yeah, trying to deal with those small little AI minions first, but then he notices Val is getting caught by the monster, and that's a rough thing. He can't switch in time. Val goes down here. We'll see if he tries to help Val up, but you probably don't want to play as one of the down hunters. Yeah, definitely not. He does switch indeed to Bucket. He's able to use that cloak to bring Val right back up. So nice move there by the support character. Uh, and what we're, we're seeing here, Jay Party, is going to be uh, Scott really controlling the game to how he wants to play it, uh, being able to switch. Uh, this is also a great way uh, to check out the hunters you want to play because you'll also be able to, uh, once you have them unlocked, be able to uh, switch between the hunters you want to see and put together your ideal lineup of hunters in this scenario, be able to practice them all, see what works best, and then go back and take this out to the real world. Yeah, that's absolutely my favorite aspect of it, is just testing some of the weirder combinations of Hunters, as we never really know what are the strong combinations, and that's on purpose here. We want the experimentation, we want the practice, mix and matching all the different groups together, and finding out what works for you and your playstyle. Yeah, it's pretty cool too with this Defend mode. Uh, defend is, as we mentioned before, part of the larger mode evacuation campaign where the final day of evacuation is this defend mode. It's basically defending this final power source uh, from the monster and his minions, as you're seeing those minions come in now. And he's right back to uh, the game plan that he, he's sticking to, Jay Party, and that's putting out the traps, putting down the mines and the sentry guns, uh, and just waiting for those minions to come in and then trying to take them down as fast as possible. Yeah, relying on a lot of this A -E AOE, I can see why he likes Bucket. Those rocket launchers are going to allow him to do damage to both of those tiny little goliaths at the same time. That's going to help him wear down those monsters. You know, this mode is perfect for the player that uh, has an idea of, you know, their 
uh, ideal situation uh, and the ideal team they want to put together. This is going to allow them uh, to come in and work on those uh, and maybe take that information back to their friends and say, hey, I was in defend mode. I was playing it. I was working through the different hunters and I found this, uh, this four that worked really well. Let's try that out. Yeah, absolutely here, DB. It's interesting, playing on the medic a lot here wants to just give vision to himself there. So when he switches between characters, he's not going to be confused. He's going to know exactly where the monster's at here. And look at that. For this fight, he's chosen to play as the medic because he knows he's been a real target by the monster. He wants to just keep Val alive and in this fight. And she's just so important for this team to keep everyone standing. Also, beyond visibility there, she is going to be able to slow down the monsters and the minions with that Trank gun. Uh, doing a nice job of that there. The longer you can slow down any of those three enemies, the more damage you can do to the rest. Uh, as he's switching now to Assault, trying to lay down some mines, uh, and not good enough at the last second there to keep uh, the monster off of that first objective. They're on to Generator 2. That said, though, J-Party, they have done some forward progress on the monster's health bar. Yeah, absolutely. That becomes the long-term progress for the hunters is just tearing down the health bar. As I mentioned earlier, there is no way to regenerate health on this mode as a monster as you start the game at Stage 3. It forces you to rely on that armor and makes it oh so important to play defensively and leave when the time is not right. One thing that we mentioned before, but I'll say it again, is that even if you're in here just practicing and working on uh, maybe a new hunter that you haven't played before, all of this uh, progress and experience that you're gaining here is going to go towards your progression and carry over to the competitive game. Uh, so it's pretty cool to be able to come in here and test out some new strategies, test out some new team comps, uh, and test out maybe some new modes that you're not familiar with if you've just been playing Hunt, for example, uh, and then take that to the, the, the real world, Jay Party, and show them what it's all about. Yeah, each mode requires such a unique strategy and a different take on what you're going to do each time. And that's what's so fun here is he's going to try some strange things here. And I like what he, Scott James chose on this one. Went with a really uh, defensive team, a lot of uh, mines to be placed by each member. And that's what allows him to just maximize the utility of each hunter here. And uh-oh, the Wraith coming back in trying to get some damage. But the Wraith with such a low armor pool needs to be very careful. Yeah, the, the Wraith, too, also su very susceptible to this uh, trap team, Jay Party. Uh, the traps laying around are good to catch both the Wraith and uh, the decoy there. And this team doing a lot of damage when Markov can get those mines down. Uh, unlike the, oh, what, nice abduction there on the Medic. <laughs> really nicely done to separate uh, the Medic there. Uh, so even the AI monster showing a trick or two here. Yeah, absolutely. Going for the body there, not the player reviving it. Unfortunately, Val does get back into this fight. And with everyone almost standing here, the monster might need to retreat here as that armor once again getting just so low. Yeah, so what we're seeing here, Jay Party, with those mines is that uh, the other monsters, uh, Kraken and uh, Goliath, both have uh, some pretty good counters towards their mines. Uh, it's a little bit harder with the Wraith, so I believe that's why Scott went with uh, Markov here. He can lay those mines down. Uh, one of the ways that um, the Wraith is going to have to combat those mines is uh, by potentially focusing that decoy on a hunter that's on the other side of the mine, having that decoy go through the mine. Uh, as you see him switch to Val here, he's trying to regroup and trying to get the hunters back to this uh, generator here uh, and hopefully keep it away from the monsters as you see the minions coming in. Yeah, and getting comfortable with those abilities is something that does require practice. Once again, perfectly uh, utilized here in the offline mode. Testing some of the weirder mistakes where it just kind of looks embarrassing where you mess it up the first few times, but you practice it offline, you master those strategies, and then bring them to the face of the internet and just smash folks online. Yeah, sentry guns also really good against the Wraith. Uh, you can lay those out when the Wraith comes in. Uh, even if the Wraith is using that uh, supernova uh, to do lots of damage onto the hunters, it's going to take damage itself with all these traps laid around. There's no way to escape them all and then again he's going to switch to bucket and he's going to put down those sentry guns he's really just uh, going through the cycle of hunter players there to lay down the best defenses possibly and then uh playing the player that he wants to use in the moment he would notice that a lot of his strategy here is just maximizing the use of those uh, traps, those mines, just making sure they're down, and then giving the rest of his team vision. I love what he's doing. He bounces between Bucket and as well as Val, and wants to focus on tracking the monster down, so no surprises here. And I like it. You're losing the UAV here, and look at that. Gets a spot already. He's going to be able to track this Wraith, and that's going to let the rest of the team know exactly where she's lurking. He also saw the minions in the UAV there, too, so he knows that they're coming in, and he knows exactly where they are. Uh, as the monster is tracked there, he's going to switch to Val, and he's going to get that Trank gun in and slow down the monster. 
This is going to buy the Hunter team some time. As you can see, the timer down to 2 minutes and 26 seconds. Uh, this is a Hunter win if they are able to hold the monster and the minions off for that time. But as we mentioned in the other video, uh, 4 minutes will be added to the timer if the monster can get through. Yeah, this is actually looking good though for the Hunters right now. Two minutes is a pretty decent amount of time, although as I say, the generator continuing to take <laughs> losses and a Hunter goes down there. We'll see if he switches out of the support class and focuses on trying to get himself back in the fight. Yeah, two Hunters go down, Jay Party. It looks like Assault and the Medic, or excuse me, Support and Assault. The Trapper, good to go to get him back up and Daisy helping with that as well. Uh, trying to get away from the Wraith there, laying down some traps as the Wraith is coming in. Uh, that AI monster trying to do work here on Scott and doing some work there, knocking down a bunch of the Hunters. Oh, and takes him down at the end there, but look at this dropship full of the whole squad here. And this is not a good look for the team as they're gonna have full reign over the generator for all the monsters there to just tear it apart here. But once again, the short dropship timer gets you right back into the fight in this mode. Yeah, fortunately they got the short dropship, but it is the entire team out of commission uh, at the moment. So the generator being worked on by the monster and its minions, as Jay Party mentioned, uh, this is going to give him some time to get in there. Uh, it looks like the monster might have actually gone back out to get some armor. Uh, sends in the decoy first. The decoy can do a lot of damage. Uh, I'm not sure if they trapped the decoy or the monster. Maybe they got both, Jay Party. Only time will tell. Yeah, actually, they got a real lucky break for the Hunters there. It looks like they took out the AI support right before they all got wiped there. So not a lot of progress made on the generator, even with all the Hunters dead. With them back in the fight here, they're at full strength and tearing apart these little tiny Goliaths. And a really great arena, Jay Party, as you see, it's just on the edge of the generator there. So the minions are trapped in here and not able to get to the generator. So a beautiful arena by Scott uh, as he switches back and forth between the rest of the Hunters trying to do damage to take the minions down. And he does a great job of that and that generator looking nice and good has no progress made to it uh, since we mentioned it before here comes the wraith or is it another decoy looks like a decoy j party and you know that is one of the most important abilities of a trapper is to really visualize the size of the arena some of the cool setups you can get as a skilled trapper are just incredible as they've done right here blocking out all of the monsters from the generator they're forcing this fight off just barely off of it and that's what's so strong about this and with only a couple seconds left the hunters are about to take this victory yeah the hunters are going to win here and they do jay party the countdown timer the wraith does not even get to the final objective the lockdown with that arena i feel like was the, yeah. the final blow to the ai hunters there and ladies and gentlemen that was scott james playing as the hunters that time going Going against the AI monster and that is solo defend part of the entire solo mode we're out of time so yeah. we will see you next time when we bring you between two beards <laughs>